In my recent video about circle music, we saw that by adding together circular motions of different frequencies, amplitudes, and phases, we can get some beautiful and interesting paths through space. Then, by mapping the distance from the origin to the pitch of a stream of notes, those paths can lead to some beautiful and interesting music. But having made music out of circles, you might naturally wonder, can we make circles out of music? Instead of going from a set of circular motions to a path to a melody, could we instead take a melody, say the opening bars of Fear Elise, and reverse engineer a path and a set of circles that would produce that melody? Well, we have to try, right? And along the way, we might just end up somewhere new and exciting. Now I suspect that some of you watching all of this were reminded of a certain 3 blue one brown video about Fourier analysis, and for good reason, because Fourier analysis is basically the exact kind of reverse engineering we're looking for. Fourier analysis is a way of decomposing an arbitrary function into a sum of sine waves. It's used in all sorts of disciplines, and in music it's the underlying machinery that lets us talk about the spectrum or frequency content of a sound. Here we'll be using it a little differently though. Instead of analyzing the sound wave itself, which is a fluctuation happening hundreds or thousands of times a second, we'll be using it to deconstruct the melodic contour of a whole melody, a fluctuation that happens several orders of magnitude slower. Now conveniently for our purposes here, the math of Fourier analysis works most naturally in the 2D plane of complex numbers, where sine waves take the form of circles. What this means is that given any looping path through the 2D plane, Fourier analysis allows us to deconstruct that path into a sum of circular motions with harmonically related frequencies. For example, here's a square rendered as a sum of circular motions. And here's a spiral. And here's the recently out of copyright face of Steamboat Willie. Can you see where we're going with this? Since we can use Fourier analysis to break down any path into a sum of circular motions, all we need to do is construct a path that plays Furelise, and then we can use Fourier analysis to turn it into dancing circles. The first step is to convert the melody to a set of corresponding distances. Next, we lay out a set of target points that are exactly those distances from the center. And finally, we use the magic machine of Fourier analysis to figure out the exact frequencies, amplitudes, and phases of circular motion to chart a path through those points. Are you ready? Here we go. Oh shoot, I mixed up my circles. Here is Furelise. You know what this means, don't you? It means that if we built a custom replica of the Disneyland teacups ride, one with dozens of nested circles instead of just three, and then we placed a powerful, carefully calibrated theremin in the middle, you could play Fear Elise just by holding your hand in the air. I'm looking at you, Steve Mould. Anyway, a couple of things to note. First of all, this depends on sampling the path at precisely the right moments. If we're just slightly off, we get a bit of a wonky version of Fear Elise. Second, you might notice that I stuck to a loop of just the first eight measures. This is because there's an underlying assumption with Fourier analysis that you're dealing with a looping or periodic function. It's true that I could have simply looped the entire piece, but it turns out that the number of terms in the spectrum, which is to say the number of circles we're adding together, is the same as the number of notes in the melody. And frankly, I didn't write the code for these animations super efficiently. Lastly, since all that matters is how far the points we're interpolating between are from the origin, there are actually many different curves that would produce this same melody. For example, we could do a path that keeps all of the notes on the horizontal axis. Or we could randomly ping pong back and forth between different angles. Anyway, however you slice it, this seems like a lot of extra nonsense to go through to just play Fear Elise, right? 
But actually, this is where the real fun begins, because now we can use all of this as a jumping off point for some Fear Elise variations. A kind of Fourier Elise, if you will. As a very simple example, what if we just interpolated between the existing notes by playing an extra note between every note of the melody? That's pretty cool, but in my original circle music video, we came up with a more interesting approach to rhythm, in which the speed of the path determined how frequently notes were played. How would that sound here? Notice that the music becomes much more free and gestural, but it's still following the contour of Fear Elise. This actually sounds particularly cool using the random angle version of Fear Elise from earlier. Another fun way to generate variations is to filter out some of the circles. For example, what if we just focused on the seven largest circles? Or how about the 15 smallest circles? Can you still hear Fear Elise in these examples? I'm curious to hear in the comments at what point the source material stops being perceivable. As a final treat, I noticed in the comments to the first video that a lot of you wished we could hear the component circles more. I thought about a few ways to do this and settled on the idea of pulsating drones. Each component circle is assigned to a sustained tone which pulsates in volume according to where it is in its cycle. I played with a few approaches to choosing the pitches of these drones, but in the end I found it most musically satisfying just to choose them manually. Anyway, as we layer these pulsing circles together with the increasingly reconstructed melody, something special starts to happen. You start to be able to feel how the pulses reinforce certain cycles within the melody. fully reconstructed. It's pretty wild, right, that all of this just came out of the first few bars of Fury Leaves. This is actually one of my favorite ways of composing, taking existing material, analyzing it, and then reconstructing it into something unrecognizable. I think when you do it right, some part of what made the original material work is retained, yet you've created something entirely new. In this case, I like it best partially reconstructed, with about seven circles. That said, some people might say that recomposing for your release using dancing circles is kind of a strange thing to do and I've been thinking lately about where ideas like this come from. I think the answer is that, over many years of studying math, music, and programming, I just have a lot of different kinds of ideas kicking around in my brain. Now, I think that watching a YouTube video or listening to a podcast is a great way to store a reference in your brain. These kinds of pointers to knowledge are great, but in my experience, real creativity comes from the things that you deeply internalize, bouncing up against each other. That's why I'm proud to have Brilliant as the sponsor of this video. Brilliant is a place where you learn by doing, with thousands of interactive lessons in math, data analysis, coding, and AI. If you want to delve into some of the ideas in this video, I recommend their course on complex numbers, which are fundamental to the math behind Fourier analysis. They also have a great beginner-friendly course on creative coding, as well as more advanced courses in Python programming. The content on Brilliant is crafted by an award-winning team of teachers, researchers, and professionals from places like MIT and Google, and has been thoughtfully broken up into short lessons to help you establish a daily learning habit. When you take the time to deeply inhabit intellectual worlds like this, it changes you. New ideas pop up in unexpected ways. 
Maybe you start making strange YouTube videos, and it's all because you subscribed to Brilliant. To try Brilliant for free for a full 30 days and get 20% off an annual premium subscription, visit brilliant.org slash Mark Evanstein or click the link in the description. Just taking a look supports my channel, and I think you'll love what you find there.